They're a little bit buggy. Um, I've got mine working more than Joel has his. Um, <laughs> my, my bug with it is I can't actually, whenever I move this, the, the plug-in in my window, it kind of freezes and I have to close it and then open it again. It opens up over here. But I normally just use the surface because you can control the plug-in from mm. here. Because um, when, I, when I was looking at buying, I wanted to spend some money into the mixing side of things. Like I was like, okay, well, I've got all these keyboards, um, but I want to spend some money and get my mixing and engineering sounding a little bit better. Um, and I was looking around at these little, you know, like UAD cards and mm. power, I, I'm, power cords. Yeah, and all, all those things. But they're all things you stick in your computer. Yeah. And I'm a sucker for having a piece of gear with lights <laughs> in front of me. <laughs> and, and this little gear, you know, sits beside my mouse and these lights make lights. And it's, um, <laughs> yeah, very, very technical. Um, and it's uh, a great little unit that's always come through with the goods. Yeah. You, can, you push it hard, it sounds good. Don't push it as hard. It's so you're, you're running that, that's running Firewire, but you still have a VST plug in that or audio units plug in audio unit. that turns you, up you, inside you, Logic. You basically you, you load it like any other plug in. Yeah. And you can have, I can have 32 of these. Okay. And each one has a compressor and an EQ on it. Oh, okay, all right. But that's that's obviously the um, the higher bit rate, the less of these you can have, and yeah. obviously stereos too, and all, all those sort of things. But um, you know, I'm kind of more using this on like my master fader and my main main parts. Everything else, I'm just talking the logic stuff because those logic plugs are good. Mm. You know, they're really really good. Yeah. You just need to muck around with them, and you'll get something that's good. Well, I also found is the same. I mean, I I use Cubase, but it's a similar thing that um, everyone. A lot of the time, using the inbuilt EQs and built and compressors, all those standard compressors that everyone uses, you get that same sound that everyone yeah. is processing it the same way, so it ends up sounding the yeah, same. Yeah, totally. So, whether it's bits of that or the guys will collect little key bits of analog gear or distortion pedals, they can just run stuff out and put it through. It's just a, a bit mm-hmm. of a change again totally. as well. And I'm, I'm a firm believer in that. And my bank account doesn't agree with me, but um, <laughs> you, the, if you if you if you invest into your music, it will sound better for it. Yeah. Um, you know, but just just I guess just be careful and do some research and don't go buying stupid shit. Mm. But um, if you invest, you invest got to buy into a couple yeah, of bits yeah, of stupid shit. Yeah, too, you've you all done that. Again, um, but you know, um, <laughs> if you invest into it, it comes out the other end sounding better. Yeah. You know, be it a good set of speakers. You know, you can never not have a good set of speakers. Mm. So what are you what are you using at the moment, speaker wise? Um, it's something I've been using for about eight, ten years. Event PS eights. Oh, okay. Yep. R- really, actually, just really quite old. Um, but I've had them for so long, I know them so well. Mm. Um, I go to other people's studios and I find it really hard to mix because mm. I know my own monitors so well. And I think if you ever buy monitors, um, it's the same thing kind of thing with microphones. Is you can like with monitors and mics and stuff as an analog piece of gear so it will always be like good speakers will always be good speakers yeah a good microphone will always be a good microphone a good synth will always be a good synth because they're not technology driven mm. like if i buy a good computer a year later it's not as good as what it was when i bought it so that's the cool thing about uh, the cool thing about hardware is you're investing into it but it will always be you can always use it and you know i find with that piece of gear in two years time it might be I might not be able to use it anymore because I hear Apple are getting rid of Firewire and if mm. they do that and that unit is now I can't use it and, the, and I'll probably have a lot of trouble selling it because no one wants it because there's no Firewire anymore mm. but if I have a good set of speakers or a good mic that's never that you know technology is never going to change so are you, are you mixing with a separate sub or are you just mixing just off two? Just two. Yep. Yeah. And you've, I mean, have you, how have you found your translation for the bass? Is that just knowledge of the speakers? Just no, I know what's going on. I know obviously I normally all club test stuff. Yeah. Um, but I think it's just trust in your ears as well. Yeah. You know, um, once you get, you know, listen to stuff enough and just A, B reference stuff. Mm. You know, like you can never, like, don't be afraid to stop your track and go back and listen to one of your favourite producers and go, oh crap, <laughs> okay, I'm missing a lot. And go back and, and you know, um, yep. do that. It's something I always found was really, really important when I was mixing. So are you uh, mastering your own tunes or are you sending to them an off? Extent, or? To an extent, like I'll master them to play them in clubs yep. and master them to um, send them to labels, but 
mostly when it's a good label, there you go. You find Give us an thought, unmastered yeah. copy with nothing on the master fader. That's normally a, a sign of a label that um, maybe is a little bit more serious than someone that, that doesn't. <laughs> just is, send us anything. Yeah, they just yeah. send, oh, send us whatever, you know. Um, but yeah. I mean, I when I finally get my label going, I don't know what I'm going to do about mastering. I might do it myself. I don't know, mm. but um, yeah, it's something I have to cross that bridge when I get there. I guess. Are mm. you happy with the finished product when they master your own, when they master your tracks? Sometimes yes, sometimes yeah. no. <laughs> <laughs> but they own the track. Right. They yeah. might, if they're happy, if they're the ones putting it out. So you know, um, yeah. <laughs> when you give them that, I, I, I mean, I guess it kind of. D- depends on the relationship with the label you know like I've got some labels that'll be like oh what do you think of the mastering job and I'll give them some you know suggestions and we'll work back and forth on it some types of track here's the master that's it that's yeah. it you know mm-hmm. um, just varies every, every case which you different. hope they're not just doing on the uh, office computer if they are, if, yeah, if, if, I, if they ask, I've heard yeah, that, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah and, and their lunch break. Yeah, um, if they ask for an, un- and then charge you for it. Yeah, yeah. if they ask for a, a un, you know, an unmaster, they normally are doing a good job of it. Yeah, I find, <laughs> you know, and I, I, whenever I, whenever a label does that, I always ask for the mastering engineer's email and go, where was my mix? What, what did I do wrong? Where, mm. what did you have to do to correct my mix mm. and that way when I'm back in the studio I know okay last time you know I was having a problem at 300 hertz or you know the Martian engineer said that my low end was this go back and look at it mm. you know. thank you very much my pleasure don't clap <laughs> don't clap finger pads